Hey everybody, Brooks and Drag Drives here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out in Las Vegas and I'm driving for the first time the McLaren 750S. Right here, I got a Tokyo Cyan 750S Spider. Today, we're gonna take it out for a nice drive through, I believe, Valley of Fire. Now the 750S is basically the evolution of the 720. It's a nice mix between 720S and 765 LT, which I have the spider of. They brought a lot of components over from the 765 LT, which includes the shorter gearing transmission, which makes it a lot more lively to drive. They've also put the 765 LT spoiler on the 750S for additional downforce. Also dropped weight over the 720S and picked up some more horsepower. So this car's making 740 horsepower. It lost weight from the 720S and has the shorter gearing from the 765 LT. What it doesn't have is the really crazy, or what I'm told, and I'll get this on a drive, is the really kind of raw LT experience that you get from track cars. So this car is going to be a lot more comfortable than the LT, but have a lot of the LT components. Design elements have changed. It's got better aero than the 720 due to some of the differences in the front piece of the bumper. It's got additional cooling, which are coming from these rear bumper outlets back here as well, down in here. Exhaust moves to a kind of a center exit like the 765, but you only got two pipes instead of four, and that saves five pounds over the 720 exhaust on the 750S. Jumping onto the interior, you could get whatever seats you want in the 750S. In the 720, you were, you were not able to get P1 seats or the Senna seats. Now I'm equipped with the comfort seats here, power, but you can get optional P1 seats and Senna seats, the ultralight weight seats, if you wanted to save some weight. So going over the buttons in the front, this is your front lift that goes up in just four seconds, twice as fast as the 720S went up and it's a convenient button, not a button somewhere down here that you gotta fumble with. You got your door locks. This is how to open the front uh, bonnet area. Over here, this is the settings for the suspension. So you simply rest your hand the steel one. You can cycle up and down through the uh, comfort, sport, and track. There is your ESC button for on off. On this side, this is for the transmission settings. So you can cycle through sport, track, and uh, comfort right there. This is for your transmission, whether you're manual shifter or auto shifting. On the steering wheel, we got our minus and plus for paddle shiftings. One thing to know about McLaren is you can actually push in. You can use this one-handed up there for up shifting, press down for down shifting. Moving over to the center, we have our engine start stop, start and stop the car. This is for aero. So if you press that, the rear wing goes up. Now, interesting, if you press that again, it'll say it doesn't want to close down but if you, because it doesn't want to hurt someone's hand. But if you hold this down for an extended period of time, that will be overridden and it will drop the air brake down. Next up, this is our Kiwi symbol. This is for uh, preset settings for all the different modes. So whether it's suspension, um, aero, manual, automatic, and uh, shifting, you simply press that button and it brings up your preset. So right now I have a preset for no arrow, track, track. And if you want to change those settings, simply set it up how you want and hold the Kiwi down for an extended period of time. And that will save your settings right there. Set up saved. Some other neat things on the left side here. Um, if you press this button, that enables your Siri. You could turn that back off. And then if you go through the different settings, you can actually view the rear camera while you're driving. Interesting. And then you got your messages. We got servicing, oil status and battery. If we back up one, you can cycle down through your trip right there. And then again down, we'll show your tire pressures. And there you go. That's what that this that's what this side of the uh, display is for. This side it depends on what you have the modes in. So if you're in track track, you get the linear display for the RPMs. If you go down into sport, sport, the display changes. And then if you go into comfort comfort it changes again so priorities on different things depending on what you're in again if I press that it's going to reset into track track no arrow now going through the settings over here I have my phone plugged in so we have CarPlay super easy um, your standard things you want to get back to the McLaren screen you just press that and that'll bring that back up this is your titanium dial I believe you can go through here and get to some of the settings so you press that and there's your CarPlay your phone you can have ambient lighting and change different colors. You can change the intensity of that. And if you back up again, 
We got our VDC for variable drift control. To enable that, you actually have to have ESC off. And there you go. Now we have the variable drift control where you can kind of go plus and minus on the different settings of this. So actually you have to turn it on and then how much drift do you want and back and forth. Really, really cool right there if you're into drifting or those kind of settings. What else we got here? We got our audio settings. This has uh, the Bowers and Wilkins system so you can do different presets, tones, balance, fade. The stereo sounds really good in this car given it's a, an exotic sports car. Some more settings in here. You got your speed assistance for parking, reverse mirror dip, performance if you want to shift beep, speed assist if you want to display over here the speed limit of the given road, you can do that there. Backing up, we got our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, time and date, different formats, internal external lighting, tire type that you have equipped on the car, convenience for the different wipers, media preferences, the Sirius, navigation preferences, security, and then system. So a lot of settings, I'm not gonna go into every little detail here, but this system is very, very responsive. They must have upgraded the processor because there's no wait time when I'm pressing on any of these things right here. So when I go back into CarPlay, you can do right there, and then I'm back into the CarPlay. You can swipe through your different apps, uh, Spotify, Waze, and so forth. This button down here rolls down the rear window so you can hear the engine better. This button here rolls down, the, puts the top down. However, I'm going to show you one other thing. This has the $10,000 electrochromatic uh, glass, so it uh, automatically tints down to keep the sun out. So if you press that, it goes clear, and if you press that, it goes dark to block the sun out. Now, if you want to drop it down, you simply press this button here, rolls down the windows, and the top drops back down. In just 11 seconds, you can drop the top. It seems a little quicker than that, actually. Now, this screen's been updated. It's got really cool 360 cams. If you press this button down here, you get to the 360 cams you can see all over. Now, what's changed here is you have little buttons. So if I want to look at the right side of the car, you can see where your left tire is if you were going to do some parking maneuvers there. And if you back out, you can go ahead and press this and look at the left side. And if you want to look at the front, you can press there and see what the front camera is showing with the 360 cameras. Press this to back out of that. Now you can drop the top down using the key, just get close enough and hit the unlock button, hold this down, and it'll roll down the windows and drop the top. This happens in about 11 seconds as this drops back down. And of course, if you want to raise up the top, you hold the lock button. As you get close enough, this will raise up. And in 11 seconds, you'll see the top closing back up. There's also storage in the back here underneath the tonneau. So if the top is up and you want a little bit additional storage, you can press the tonneau button right here. What this will do is raise the back. And if the top is up, you get a little more storage right under this area, about this high and about that deep, but not much. And then you can close it back down using this button. Now, after you do this, if you go to put the top back down, the car will ask you to confirm that there's nothing back there. Otherwise, the top will come down and crush whatever's back there. All right, so enough talking. Let's jump in the 750S, take it for a drive, and see how it compares against my 765 LT Spider. like the 765 LT in terms of speed and acceleration and the gearing of course but it is um, much much more comfortable now I'm in comfort mode now I want to put in sport sport and it just doesn't rattle like my 765 and it just uh, it's got the pops and crackles and it's
right, so we're driving through Valley of Fire right now. I've got the car in comfort, comfort, and with these comfort seats, the car is super, it's actually pretty quiet, easy to drive, and uh, handles these roads just great. Now, if you crank it up into sport, sport, by bumping these two things here, all of a sudden we get pops and crackles, uh, suspension tightens up a little bit, and, oh, and the car comes a little bit more, the car becomes a little more alive. Now one of the great things about having the Spider is even though I have the top up, I can simply roll down the rear window right here. And now we can hear a lot more engine sounds coming out the back. So you can hear the pops and crackles now. And here we go. This car is very, very fast. The keys just flew out of my pocket just now. Even if you're not a spider guy, just being able to roll down the rear window here and listen to the engine better is worth getting it and just leave the top up all the time. Spider only adds about 90 pounds to the car. So McLaren, you know, going from coupe to spider, 90 pounds. If you did that in a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, you're adding like 250 pounds to the car. McLaren always keeps it super lightweight, so it's really not a big disadvantage to add the spider if you're gonna order the 750S. You can really hear those pops and crackles. The key to getting that is leaving the car's transmission mode in sport. That does ignition cut, a little more aggressive. It adds a little more drama to the shifting because it's not so fast and seamless as if you hit it in track track mode. I gotta say, I really like the new layout um, with the new infotainment. I'm really not missing the flip down screen that I have and that I had in the 720 and the 765. And having CarPlay uh, down here in the center stack is just really, really a great addition. It would be awesome if I could retrofit this to the uh, 765 LT. Now, word is there is no 750 LT coming. The 765 LT is the end of the line for McLaren's non hybrid cars. So everything else is going to be hybrid. I think 765 and the last two years of, I think they're doing two or three years of the 750S are gonna be super, super uh, unique in the fact that all the cars going forward are probably gonna be hybrid, so good car to pick up. Drop to the Valley Fire, I'm on just sitting on the highway, I'm in comfort, comfort. The car's actually pretty quiet with everything all sealed up. Um, very compliant, of course we got tons of passing power if you just want to gun it. Watch out. Vehicle on now that's in ahead. comfort, comfort, not too aggressive. And then here's where these things are really easy to use. I'm just going to bump up into track or one, month, one bump each. Now I'm in sport, sport. And now if I gun it, it's much more aggressive and the shifting much more responsive. And then yeah, I don't have to move my hands from the steering wheel. I want to go into track, track, hit both buttons there, and now we're in track, track. The display, the display also changes on the front down here as well when you're in track with the RPMs just going across the top. And of course, I want to go into manual mode. I press this button right here. Now I can downshift. I can roll down the rear window. And now we can really hear the engine. Ready? These cars are so crazy fast. Right now, I've been in the car for about four hours, and in my LT, my back would be hurting due to the P1 seats, and it's just a lot louder of a car, and you just feel a little more exhausted after driving that many hours in the LT, but not in this car. So keep in mind, we're in Las Vegas. I did do a couple performance tests. I'm in the Spider with the comfort seats. This is probably the heaviest spec you can get in the 750S.
and it managed to do a 10 forward about 140 miles an hour. I did some subsequent launches. We were able to bring that zero to 60 time to three seconds without the rollout, 2.7 seconds with the rollout. If I had kept going, this car probably would have broken into the nines on the street. Still have some track time to run this around the track. Probably gonna be a separate video for that, but I'm gonna see if I can get hold of a coupe with maybe some lighter seats and do some additional testing. Also keep in mind, we're in Las Vegas, we're at altitude, DA is probably like 3,000 plus. They're only running 91 fuel. That's all that we had available out here. So there's definitely gonna be some power uh, changes with the fuel as well. I did manage to get some data for a McLaren 750S coupe from my buddy Inez. He ran 9.8 at almost 145 on the street. All right, so that's a wrap of how to drive the McLaren 750S. We got some track time in the 750S coupe with the upgraded brakes and the Senna seats, that thing was a riot. So much fun out there on the track. Also got a ride in the Artura GT3 race car. That thing was absolutely insane. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, helps the video on the channel, and we'll see you next video.